G'day ZKD here, back with another video from the Path of Exile Awakening Beta. With the addition of Act 4, GGG is seeking to expand out the options for alternative endgames besides mapping. Now in the current life game, we do have things like Dominus Farming and Piety Farming as a popular way of getting extra loot outside of maps. Outside of map farming in general though is not very uh, varied and not as popular. Like, it's only a few magic finding builds that really do too much Dominus farming. It's not, not a major alternative endgame. With Act 4, they are really trying to make this and build this as an act that people can farm as an alternative to endgame. And currently even in the beta, Act 3 Merciless is where you still get to maps. Maps become available, they start at level 68, so that's been pushed up a little bit. Now when you get to the point where you can start running maps, you can either choose to start running maps, or you can push your way through into Act 4, and then start experience farming in Act 4 and start boss farming in Act 4. Now, currently, there's still five more bosses to be added to Act 4, so I can't really talk about the boss farming aspects of this, apart from the fact that they've said they're really trying to aim to give a, a, like a big variety of different bosses that you can feasibly farm for loot at endgame instead of going into maps. However, I can talk about some of the experience farming that can be done in Act 4 as, al as an alternative to mapping. Now this character that you're seeing in the background has done a couple of maps, but I actually obtained the vast majority of my experience in Act 4, outside of maps, testing different experience farming zones. And it seems that, like it'll be quite feasible to level a character to 80 or 85 to, outside of maps entirely if you choose to go on to Act 4 instead and do the majority of your farming in there. Now, well-rolled maps in general is still going to be better if you get that pack size magic monsters map. That's still going to be much better experience. But if you want a more consistent sort of approach and you don't really want to get into the map system, that sort of thing doesn't really interest you too much, then you can instead go into Act 4 and do some farming in there. So, so far, I've only been able to test the early parts of Act 4 experience farming, but I've tested and compared three different zones for you guys that I'll be able to talk about their different pros and cons and how good they are experience-wise. And each of these three zones that I have tested so far are excellent experience, really, really good experience. The equivalent of, you know, 68 to 71, 72 maps with decent rolls. Now, when you start getting really well rolled maps, those tend to be a little bit better. But of course, these zones are much more consistent. You know the exact mobs you're getting, you know the exact dangers you're going to be, have to approach. And, you know, it's going to be consistent. You don't need those consistent map drops to be able to keep up that consistent XP. So let's go through each of the three zones that I tested and I'll talk about how much experience you can expect to get from them and also some of the other pros and cons of each of these zones. Now, keep in mind this is not going to be the be all and end all of testing. I was only able to do a little bit of testing on each of these, but it will still give you an overall picture of what you're looking at in terms of Act 4 farming. So first up we have Aqueducts. It's pretty well known at the moment that Aqueducts is an ex excellent experience farming zone. It's quite linear, it's kind of a little bit ledge-like with just a little bit more sort of uh, going crisscrossing side to side. And there are some guaranteed blue packs in certain areas of the Aqueducts as well. Whenever you see kind of a, an area that branches off into this broken bridge section, there's always a guaranteed champion pack at the end of each one of those. Zones with guaranteed champion packs are usually really good XP farms, and because this is so linear and also so dense in terms of mobs, this is an excellent XP farming zone. So in my testing on my character here, and this is corrected for XP penalties, so I, I did this calculating the XP penalty and then removing the XP penalty to receive our true experience per hour, I got 138 million XP per hour in Aqueducts. Really, really good stuff. Now this is including the time, you know, spent running in between resetting the zone and all of its stuff, ramping up my character. Obviously my character has very fast clear speed, so you might get a little bit less experience per hour if you're not quite as fast. But this is a good zone for most builds. It's open enough that ranged builds can do pretty well in here, but it's closed off enough and linear enough that things like ball lightning and melee builds will also have excellent XP uh, efficiency in here. It's also an exceptionally safe zone. You've got these kind of flying turkey things which go down very quickly. There's a bunch of zombies which obviously prevent, present no real threat. The boss is easy and fast to kill, and the other mobs are kind of like these uh, ball water elemental things, and they aren't, they aren't really much of a danger as well. So overall, it's a very easy, safe, fast, linear zone with excellent experience, an excellent starting point if you can push past Dominus in Act 3 to get into Act 4 and start farming. And you can farm this all the way to 80 with a reasonable amount of experience penalty. Once you start getting in the 77, 78, 79 uh, bracket, it starts to slow down a bit, but you can feasibly get to 80 in this zone because it is so fast, so linear, and such a good farming zone in general. 
Now Dried Lake was the one that I wanted to really compare Aqueducts with because I knew that the mob density in Dried Lake seemed really good. However, it's a much more open zone and it is actually much more dangerous. So I did some testing in here as well, and I actually also got 138 million XP per hour. I actually got slightly more than what I got in Aqueducts, but uh, that's maybe due to the fact that it's a large open area and I'm a ranged character. So the drawback here is going to be that mobs are much more spread out than they are in Aqueducts. So if you're playing something like a ball lightning character or a melee character, or something with a smaller AoE than something like a split arrow, uh, bow character, then it is probably going to be a bit slower. But if you are a ranged car style character, like what you see in the background here, then the XP in here is going to be excellent. Now the drawback, as I was saying, is that this is a much more dangerous zone. There are puncture mobs and there are tornado shot mobs in here that hit, both hit very, very hard and are exceptionally dangerous. So if you're a little bit squishy to fizz damage and that sort of stuff concerns you, then it is gonna it is gonna make that zone much more dangerous. So in hardcore, we'll probably see more people farming aqueducts than farming dried lake. The other thing to consider is that those knitted horrors, when they roll as a rare, some of them can be really hard to kill and really tanky, and you'll see me maybe skip some rares occasionally when I'm farming this zone to keep up my experience per hour. Now because I was just testing for maximum XP per hour in this farming test here of Dried Lake, I skipped Vol, because Vol takes a little bit of time to kill, it takes maybe 20-30 seconds to kill if you're on a pretty effective character, but he represents an excellent opportunity to get a whole bunch of extra loot. So I kind of liken Dried Lake a little bit to doing Lunaris Piety farming on live servers. Lunaris is excellent XP. It's probably, you know, it's got some dangers just like Dried Lake does. So you have to be a little bit careful in there. You have to make sure your character is well constructed enough to handle those dangers. But the experience is really, really good, and there's the potential for that big loot explosion at the end. In fact, overall, I'd say the zone is better than doing Lunaris Pyre farming because it's much faster to do a run of this and get to Vol and get the loot from Vol at the end than it is to do a Lunaris Pyre farm. In fact, I would say that it's pretty insane, and I would expect maybe some changes to be made to this zone because the overall XP plus loot potential of Dried Lake is incredible, phenomenal. Such a good farming zone. So we'll see potentially if it does if it goes in like it is now, and this is happening on the beta. You'll see characters uh, with a lot of move speed, stacking magic fine, and very quickly running to vault, getting a lot of uh, loot, and maybe killing some of the juicier packs along the way and getting really good XP at the same time. So Dried Lake, excellent farming zone, very comparable in terms of XP per hour if you're skipping Vault to Aqueducts, but a little more dangerous. So it's going to be the more attractive uh, option if you want to balance out your XP per hour with your potential loot as well, as long as you can handle those dangers. So Aqueducts and Dried Lake are both zones that people have talked a lot about as really good farming zones, but one that I've seen almost no discussion on is Mines 2. Now Mines 1 is pretty rubbish, but once you go through it and get to the doorway to Mines 2, you can refresh it either end of Mines 2, and it's actually a hugely, hugely populated zone, like it's very extremely mob dense. Now the actual layout is a little more confusing, so when I was doing the testing, I got lost a couple of times and had to backtrack, but with a little bit of practice and learning of the layout, then I think this could be insane, because in my testing, I actually got 156 million XP per hour, and this is the same zone level as Dried Lake and Aqueducts, all of these zone level 67. So because of that like huge mob density, although it's a slightly more confusing zone, if you take out that confusion by learning the zone a little bit better, then the XP per, penny, XP per hour could be even a little bit better than what I tested here, which is significantly better than Dried Lake than Aqueduct. So it's surprising then that I haven't seen this tested so much, and I think it's because overall the mine zones are kind of dark, you know, a little bit more scary and uh, also a little bit more confusing in terms of their layout. But it just takes a bit of time and practice to learn the layout of these zones. I think we could be seeing much higher XP per hour than even what I got here. So maybe if I spend a bit more time practicing the zone, we could even see as high as something like 165, 170 million XP per hour. Insane, insane zone, super dense, full of massive packs. You get heaps of champs running it along. And uh, as long as you don't get yourself lost too often, it's gonna be a really good farming zone. Now it's a little more dangerous than Aqueducts, but not quite as dangerous as Dried Lake, in my opinion, but that sort of thing is going to depend on your build a little bit. There's also a couple of unique bosses in here that are uh, pretty quick to kill if you have high DPS, but can be a little more dangerous if you don't have high DPS. Overall, each of these three zones represent excellent farming uh, spots in Act 4, and these are all available literally as soon as you get into Act 4. You basically run through Aqueducts to get to the town, you can go directly from the town to Dried Lake, and you can run to Mines 2 very quickly just by going through Mines 1 from the town itself. So these are all the first couple zones in Act 4, and they each represent insane farming zones. So I'm very curious to see what happens when they add the rest of Act 4 and whether there's going to be more excellent XP farming zones of higher level, because after this they start to get up to to 68 and maybe it goes even higher than that once they add some 
some of the further zones later in the later in the act. So it'll be very interesting to see if there's some good XP farming zones at higher level, because if that happens, currently these 67 zones are like dense enough and excellent farming zones enough that you can feasibly get to 80 to them in them really quickly. If they add zones of one or two levels higher with this sort of efficiency, then we could be seeing characters get to 85 outside of maps very quickly in Act 4. Which, I don't really think is a bad thing. I think it's nice to have this alternative to maps. As I said, a well rolled map is always going to be better than these zones, but you have the consistency if you want to run these zones over and over again. And some people really like doing that, so opening up these alternative farmings uh, spots for endgame, I think is a very attractive option and I'm really liking what GGG is doing with this. Anyway, I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below, let me know. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.